Well, the project's really important because cuckoos are in very rapid decline. We've lost about half the birds in the UK over the past 25 years. But we don't really know the reasons for this. And as they spend most of the year in countries outside Britain, the project's been really important in uh, helping us to understand their, more about their annual cycle. This spring we'll be putting on tags for the third year running. Two years ago we tagged five cuckoos, that was the first year of the project, and then last year we tagged another sample of birds um, so that we had 14 birds we were tracking um, at the end of the last breeding season. We've really got very little previous information about cuckoo migration. In fact, the best bit of information we've got from Africa comes from 80 years ago. This was of a bird that was ringed in a pile of wagtails nest in England uh, in 1928, which was found in Cameroon about a year and a half later in January 1930. So the project's been really important in helping us to, to learn about the annual cycle of the birds, um, the routes they take, the stopover locations they use, and um, a lot about the timing of their migrations. It's quite incredible. We thought the birds would be spending maybe two or three months in the UK, but actually one of our tagged birds only spent six weeks in the UK. So really they're more African birds than Eurasian birds. One of the things that really astonished us in the first year was out of five birds, two took a completely different route to the one we thought that they would take. Most of the cuckoos leave England um, in a southeasterly direction, which is pretty much what we expected from ringing. Um, they then stop over in northern Italy before flying in one great big jump all the way over the Sahara to um, Africa. But actually, two birds decided to go uh, southwest. They passed through France and Spain and then migrated around the edge of Western Africa and then crossed uh, Africa eastwards to the, the Congo Basin. So ended up exactly where the other birds ended up, but actually spent uh, longer doing it and also uh, travelled 3,000 kilometres further to get to the same place. We've got some indications that, um, certainly from last year, that this route might be less successful than the other routes. And given that um, English cuckoos in the southeast of the country are the ones which are declining most, this is really interesting. It's something that we need to follow up in the future. Every bit of information we get adds to our knowledge about cuckoos and their migrations and the hazards they face on the journey. People have been able to follow the progress of the individual cuckoos on a day-by-day -day basis and this has really captured people's imagination as they see the story unfolding. There's been a lot of um, interest from all aspects of the media and we hope this has gone a long way towards raising the profile of what's happening with the cuckoos and also migratory birds in general which are suffering from large declines. Well, probably the highlight for me was finding Lister last year when he came back to the UK. Last spring was a really exciting time because we really didn't know when the birds would be arriving back. And suddenly he appeared in, in back in the broads where we had originally tagged him. And we had a BBC film crew coming to, to, try, to try and film him. We decided to go to the last known place that we could, we could get a location from. I'm going to switch this on. It's got the classic cuckoo call, the cuckoo cuckoo of the male, and it's got the bubbling call of the female. And it's what we use to attract them in when we're catching them to fit a tag. It's going to be loud and I've got to find the track, so let's go for it. And after about a couple of hours, we actually heard a cuckoo calling. And then after only about 10 minutes, Lister flew past. Seeing Lister that day was, in was incredible because this is the first time we've actually followed a cuckoo for its entire annual cycle. And to find him on the day after he arrived back in the UK, flying around cuckooing was fantastic. We were very lucky in the first year that we got funding from the BBC Wildlife Fund which basically gave us seed money to develop the project. We've also received donations, quite big ones, from Essex and Suffolk Water and the Sound Approach which have helped fund the project. But really it's been the generosity of the public and uh, individual donors that have really overwhelmed us and we've been very grateful to them for their support. Each tag costs £2,500 and then associated with each tag we have a monthly charge of £60 to get per tag to get the data from the, the satellite company. Um, and really, all this work wouldn't have been possible without the generosity of all the, all the people who donated money to the project. You can sponsor a bird on the BTO website for as little as £10, or you could even sponsor a month of satellite time for £60. This year we'll be tagging some more cuckoos, so make sure you come back to the BTO website to check out how these new birds are getting on. With the birds we've tagged so far, we've found out a lot of really new information, but there's still an awful lot to find out. And really, public support for the continuation of the project is essential. Thank you.